Daniel Wong. I'm a engineer at Definity, and today what I'd like to show you is how to verify NNS canister upgrade proposals. Um, so what this means is that um, the, in the proposal it will say, okay, the code that we used to build this WASM that we want to install is here. And, but the proposal then contains the actual WASM itself, and so it, there's no, uh, there's not yet automatic verification that uh, this claim is true. So uh, a, a responsible neurons will verify that the WASM is uh, built from the source code uh, indicated by the proposal. So that's what we're going to do. So let's let's jump into it. Uh, so first we're going to uh, look at an example of such a proposal. So let's do that by going to dashboard.internetcomputer.org. And then I'll go to the governance section. And if we scroll down a bit, um, there will be a list of proposals. So let me find a suitable example here. So I just filter by system canister management. And I think this one will work. Yeah, OK. So now we're looking at a proposal. And um, here's all the stuff that the proposer wrote um, about what this proposal does. So you know, all the claims in here uh, should be verified because they, the proposer can write whatever they want here. And, and the same for this title. So if you didn't tr tr necessarily trust the proposer, you need to verify what they're saying. <clears throat> so what are they saying? They're saying that here is the code that we used uh, to uh, build the WASM, whose fingerprint is this. And that WASM uh, in this proposal we want to be installed in the governance canister. So, so uh, if we take what they say at face value, this code uh, controls the behavior or determines the behavior of this canister, or it will when this proposal is executed. Um, so since this is from the a past proposal, um, it's already been done, but, uh, but that's OK. Uh, we can pretend, for the purposes of this screen recording, um, that it hasn't been executed yet. And so we are a neuron that is trying to decide, should I vote for this? Um, so one of the first steps is, OK, what code was actually used? Um, so that is what I'm going to show you. And uh, to get, get a quick overview of that, um, the main steps are actually in the proposal text itself. And so we'll mostly be doing these instructions. Now, I said that you know, the proposer just wrote this, so they could have written any instructions. But you, know, you can read the instructions and decide, OK, is this a correct thing to do? And if you say yes to every single step, then um, <clears throat> at least uh, you have verified uh, what th the proposal is saying in this section of it anyways. Okay. So um, uh, one step that's not mentioned here is that uh, we need to first clone the Git repository where the code lives. So I'll show you that in case you haven't done it yet. Uh, yeah, so let's let's figure that out. So first we have to locate the code, which is hosted on GitHub. And uh, if you just search for GitHub, Definity IC, you should be able to find it. Here it is. Uh, make sure you're at this URL. And what I'm trying to find on this page is uh, this address right here. Uh, so we want to clone from there. Um, oh, actually, before we start doing that, let me say that you will need a, a Linux machine. Uh, it needs to have Ubuntu 22.04 or later. And you also need Podman. Um, so for those who don't know, Podman is kind of like Docker. It's basically a way that we can uh, make builds reproducible easily. Uh, so if you have those things, then you can take that this thing that I just copied, 
and start uh, start verifying. So let's let's do that. Okay, let me. Okay, so first let me SSH to a Linux machine that I have, and then um, I want to get clone the IC repo. And this will take a minute or so, depending on your internet speed. Uh, for me, it doesn't take that long, probably less than one minute. And then let me just, while that's happening, okay, I don't need this anymore. Let me just look at the instructions. Okay, the first step once we finish cloning is to git fetch. So for me, uh, git fetch is not necessary because that just brings in that's only if you've already checked out the IC repo like a long time ago and uh, now you need the latest stuff this just brings it in but of course I don't need that because I just did git clone but just for completeness oops I forgot I have to go into the repo itself first then I run git fetch all right so there we go okay definitely have the latest stuff now and then uh, so the second step or third step, depending on how you want to count it, is to check out the code that this proposal claims the WASM is built from. So this it's claiming that this is the code that was used. So git check out that. All right, this is a little bit scary looking, but that's fine. That's expected. No need to worry. And then we do the what I consider to be the most interesting step, which is to actually perform the build. So this is where you reproduce the WASM. Um, and what we should find at the end is that it is equal to uh, the WASM that's in the proposal. Okay. So, okay. Uh, this is where you need Podman. So this is just the wrapper script that we... Uh, wrote uh, in which to perform the build in a reproducible way and you'll see this scary looking red text but it's actually good this is what you want to see so don't worry about that um, and then uh, this will take a while except in my case I'd already done it before so all the results were cached but for you it would take a few minutes depending on um, how powerful your machine is. So this is where you want to have many cores, a lot of RAM. Um, uh, I don't think it takes that long on a reasonably, reasonably powerful machine. Like, you probably won't have enough time to go and make coffee. Um, okay, so for me, the build is done now. And then um, this is where we... So what that command did was it created this uh, bunch of files in a new directory. Uh, that directory is artifacts slash canisters. So it created all these WASMs, which is maybe more than what we need for this proposal, because this proposal just targets the governance canister. Uh, so the only file that we need to check here is the governance canister WASM, whose name is governance canister that wasm.gz so let's run this command to generate the fingerprint of the wasm that was just built and this is what we want to see matches the proposal this fingerprint so let's copy that let's go back to the proposal and if we do con uh, command f or control f we paste in that fingerprint. Uh, we see a few occurrences in the page, and the one that really uh, matters is this one. So uh, we see it did match, so that's good. That means that the claim here that uh, we're about to run this code if this proposal is executed, we've made sure that that's true. Um, there are a couple other occurrences of the fingerprint on the proposal page. Um, one is in the title, so that means that the proposer didn't lie when they wrote the title. That's good. Uh, the other occurrence is in the body 
or the summary of the proposal. So again, uh, we've uh, made sure that the proposer isn't lying, or at least this part of the proposal isn't lying. Um, so yes, good. Let's talk about, okay, so we've accomplished the main mission here, which is to link this to this. Um, but let me let me talk about some other bits of this proposal that we haven't looked at yet. Okay, so this is claiming in the body that we are targeting the governance canister. Uh, so to verify this, you would look at this part of the proposal. So if you believe that this is the governance canister's ID, then okay, that part of the proposal is also verified. Um, all right, good. So. If you have those two pieces, then um, the effect of this proposal you now understand. Well, um, at least you have the ability to understand. So um, now we can be sure that if we start reading any of these files here, so for example, RS NNS governance source governance. Okay, we can be sure that the proposal will be running this code that I'm quickly scrolling through. Okay, hope you can read fast. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of code. Um, yeah, so that was a lot of code. Uh, if you believe that the previous proposal was also correct, then maybe you only want to see the changes that have occurred uh, between the previous proposal and the one that you're currently looking at. So um, the proposer very helpfully uh, lists some of the commits that uh, yeah, have been made since the previous proposal um, in this release notes section. Uh, the proposer has also uh, tried to summarize all of this in the features section. So this is something that is typically written by hand by a member of the NNS team. Um, so, uh, this, this, let's look at this command here. There's three interesting arguments, at least in my opinion. So this one we've seen already, this is the commit that, uh, we just verified, uh, which, um, tell, this is, this is the code that was used to make this artifact. And here's another commit. Um, this is the commit of the previous proposal. So um, this is something that you can verify. I won't show it. Uh, but if you look at the previous proposal that targets this same canister, uh, you and you believe that proposal, which again, you can verify, uh, this, th you'll find that this is the what appeared here. Um, so what this command is then doing is showing the commit messages between the previous proposal and the current one. Um, except actually, uh, so now moving on to the third argument of this, um, <coughs> it doesn't list all commits from the repo because uh, there would be kind of an overwhelming amount of them, but, um, and instead this just lists the one that touch files in this directory. And the reason we choose this is that this is where all of the, the application code lives. Um, so there will be changes to libraries that are used in the, uh, also that also live in the IC repo, but um, uh, those you know wouldn't have as much of uh, behavior impact uh, on on this specific canister. Um, so if you if you really want to read every everything in the IC repo, all the changes since the previous proposal, you would do the same command but omit this part. Okay. Um, so yeah, let we should be able to reproduce this as well. So let me copy this and uh, do it over here. And uh, so it prints out a bunch of stuff which should be equal to what's in the proposal text. Let's see if this works. Yeah, okay, cool. So we've, you know, verified 
this section as well. I mean, but uh, these are just, again, uh, comments that somebody wrote. They don't actually determine the behavior of the WASM, but at least um, you can now uh, get a quick overview of what intended behavior changes uh, committers were, were doing. Um, and then um, if you want to, let's say, verify one of these commits, we can get diff. Uh, you can do this. And this will actually show you the code changes in that commit. Yeah. Okay. So now we're really reading the code. Um, but we're not just reading the whole thing. We're just reading the changes. Uh, so you might go back to this list and decide, okay, which are the ones that are most interesting to you and, and read those. Uh, read those diffs. Um, and I think that's all I have for you today. So uh, let me just uh, thank you for watching and thank you for your support of the internet computer. I uh, hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any feedback, uh, I suggest you, you you post it to the forum. Thanks a lot, and uh, see you all next time. Bye.